hello, welcome, and thank you for joining us today um, for our first in my series of the BMC Tech Talks. Today's topic is making zero trust security a reality on the mainframe. And Ked Chisholm, our director of worldwide cybersecurity, will be hosting. Um, this is our standard legal um, notification. Um, as we are not really showing anything that is not GA or coming out very shortly, um, we, we ask you to please um, discuss what you've seen today and ask questions um, and share this information. Uh, today, Ken will be covering Venify Certificate Management, Illumio Microsegmentation, Reach Detection, Mainframe Security Administration, and then I'll cover some next steps and Q&A. And with that, I'd like to introduce Ken, who, as I said, is our worldwide cybersecurity sales director. Ken, thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to what you have to share. Thanks, Terry. I'll um, start the discussion really with uh, the topic of zero trust. Um, zero trust, an interesting concept, a lot different than the way most mainframe teams think about their, their mainframe users. Um, most mainframe teams go to great lengths to set up their RACF top secret or ACF2 configurations so that users only have access to the resources they're supposed to, and they also only have uh, privileges uh, necessary to do what they need to do. Uh, and they sort of trust that the users, and there are thousands of them on the mainframes, essentially are there to get the work done that needs to be done. Zero trust is sort of a different perspective that essentially says you can't trust that the person who's logging in is actually the person that you think they are. They could be a threat actor. So in that context, from a zero trust perspective, you're continuously validating that the users aren't acting maliciously. Um, about 60% of the successful mainframe attacks actually are from internal users who have access, who go rogue and do things that, um, uh, that they really shouldn't be doing, including getting money out of the accounts, um, bringing down the mainframe. There are a number of things that a rogue user can do. So we want to be continuously looking for um, malicious activity, uh, which would indicate that the user has either gone rogue or may not be the person that we think they are. Now, there have been a number of attacks on the mainframe, um, exploiting an IMS vulnerability in order to uh, take money from accounts. Um, there was a ransomware, a successful ransomware attack uh, that brought down a financial institution. Um, other areas where insiders have gotten a hold of and abused vulnerabilities on the mainframe for financial gain uh, or, to, uh, or to do damage to the mainframe environment. Interestingly enough, there's a perception of mainframe team members that the mainframe is secure, um, which it's securable, but it may not be as secure as people think. Uh, mainframes have vulnerabilities and BMC performs uh, security assessments and penetration tests to examine mainframes identify vulnerabilities that could potentially lead users to be able to access data, move data off of the mainframe, um, land and launch malware, and maybe even bring the mainframe down. So there are numerous potential vulnerabilities that would allow these kinds of nefarious activities. And our services team is uh, highly skilled and able to investigate those. So it's one of the services that we offer. 
when you look at protecting the mainframe, first of all, you have to consider the mainframe is essentially a a mini data center. Um, it's got thousands of users oftentimes, many times tens of thousands of users. And there's no way to monitor the activity for tens of thousands of users without automation. So there needs to be a number of elements where users could attack the mainframe that you need to be looking for. So certificates are mechanisms that machines use to talk to the mainframe in a verified fashion. You also have users that are on the network that may want to log into the mainframe surreptitiously and potentially do damage. Um, there's security monitoring for breach detection, an always on ability to watch what's happening and to make sure that people aren't doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And of course, your login systems, RACF, ACF2, um, top secret, need to be configured properly so that users only have access to the things that they should have access to. So we'll talk in a little more detail about each of these four areas that we need to make sure we keep track of from a security standpoint. From a certificate management standpoint, um, certificates are implemented on the mainframe manually. Um, it's a painful process to watch. Copying, pasting, putting into batch jobs, running batch jobs, getting verifications. Um, so what we've done is we've partnered with the number one organization in the world for managing certificates in large enterprise environments. And that organization is Venify. What we've done with Venify is while Venify manages certificates for the overall environment, until we created this partnership, essentially certificates on the mainframe would be managed manually. So you'd send a ticket over, the mainframe team would implement a certificate. But now what we've done is we've automated that so that the mainframe is just another device amongst the number of devices where certificates get implemented. So when a certificate gets implemented and it needs to be on the mainframe, Venify captures the information that's needed. This certificate is implemented. The mainframe team determines when that certificate actually gets deployed. We validate it. And the users on the mainframe, the security team on the mainframe, never really needs to go into the mainframe to implement certificates anymore because we've automated that. And that's important because when certificates aren't automated, sometimes they expire. And when they expire, applications stop. And when mainframe applications stop, that can cause a lot of issues for large organizations. So our goal is leverage automation through Venify to make sure that applications stay up and that it doesn't require manual processes that can be susceptible to errors. We do that by leveraging a communication vehicle between Venify and the mainframe where we get the commands from Venify we understand what the certificates are that need to be implemented, and then we go ahead and do that on the mainframe without requiring manual intervention. The next layer is really a network layer. So if you're on the network and you type in an IP address for an LPAR on a mainframe, you have visibility to that mainframe. And if you've been able to collect login information, you can use that IP address in order to actually log into the mainframe. Illumio is designed to restrict lateral movement on the network by only allowing authorized users to access devices. 
So in the mainframe world, we determine which traffic is legitimate. So we'll watch the traffic, validate that the users are valid, and then configure the mainframe to only allow access for the valid users. In that way, if a user is on a Microsoft box or a Linux box, for example, and they're not valid user to log into the mainframe, they don't even see the mainframe on the network. If you were to try and ping the network, it would tell you that IP address is not valid. So the goal is to eliminate traffic moving to the mainframe at the network level. And it's really a key component of what we would call zero trust. So Lumio's policy compute engine is designed to understand traffic and build policies so that only authorized users have access to the devices, including the mainframe. It also restricts movement from one LPAR to another because only authorized users are allowed to, to traverse uh, those, those LPARs uh, using the Illumio solution. Next, we are looking inside of the mainframe for unusual activity, uh, breach activity. We, uh, security teams call them indicators of compromise. So there are hundreds of areas that BMC's technology looks at. We know where to look and we know what to look for. Somebody escalated their privileges. Somebody is accessing data sets they shouldn't be. Or somebody's behaving in a way that's unusual for them. So threat actors behave differently than users. Threat actors will start looking around for areas that they can exploit. And even that looking around process is unusual act, uh, activity for a user. So our behavioral machine learning analytics would, for example, identify that a user has just touched a data set that they don't normally touch. They are accessing the mainframe at a time they don't normally access the mainframe. So we're letting the computer determine what normal behavior is. And then when that user acts outside of normal behavior, we surface that as an alert. Hundreds of areas that we're continuously looking for on the mainframe to determine whether that person is doing things that could be malicious on the mainframe. The other thing that we do is not only do we continuously look for areas, but one of our goals is to link the mainframe security activity to the security operation center of the organization. So many companies do not send mainframe security alerts to the security operation center. And we make it very easy to not only know when malicious activity is taking place on the mainframe, but to notify the security operations center and the mainframe teams that there are things happening on the mainframe that you probably need to investigate. Um, I'll give an example. A, a very large credit card company wants to know when an interactive user accesses DB2 and then FTPs data off of the mainframe. That sequence of events is very concerning for this organization. So when that happens, the mainframe team knows, the security operations center knows, and telephone calls are initiated in order to understand why that user is exhibiting that behavior. Finally, Keeping your mainframe secure requires keeping your login systems, resources, and privileges tight so that users only have access to what they're supposed to have access to. But when you have thousands of user IDs on your mainframe, that becomes challenging. 
If you need to change access for 2,000 users, doing that one at a time is a very painful process, especially when it requires mainframe skills in order to implement those kinds of changes. So BMC is introducing into the marketplace a graphical interface that lets you manage security administration, profiles, resource groups, privileges, et cetera. So our goal is to allow you to do bulk changes and to do it using a graphical interface so that you don't have to be necessarily um, a legacy mainframe engineer in order to execute the, the administrative tasks that are required uh, consistent with your security for mainframe. So this new entry will allow organizations to more quickly administer security on their mainframes. It spans all three mainframe login systems, RACF, Top Secret, and ACF2. Um, and, and our real goal is to enable quicker and more efficient administration of your mainframe security environment. So that covers the key areas for zero trust from a mainframe perspective. Make sure that the computers that are connecting are verified with certificates that are implemented in an automated fashion. Make sure that network users only have access to the mainframe if they've been authorized. Consistently watch for breach detection activity on the mainframe and notify the mainframe teams and the security operations center when that activity actually occurs. And finally, provide an easier mechanism for users to administer mainframe security on their mainframes to keep that, uh, those resources and privileges as tight as possible. I'll turn it back over to you, Terry. Ken, thank you so much for all that information. I know you covered a lot in a fairly short amount of time, um, but it was all great, and I'm sure there's going to be tons of questions. So, as always, um, when we do these presentations, we leave you with some next steps. So, the first next step would be that advance it. Yeah. Um, to, sh to share with you some of Ken's upcoming presentations, he is going to be in share um, uh, August 15th. If you're already signed up to go to share, uh, you know, please look them up and let us know. Um, uh, we can see if we can hook you up with some one-on-one -on -one time. He's also going to be at the Venify conference in Las Vegas on September 18th, and I'm sure there's going to be more coming up after that. Um, if you don't have the opportunity to go see and meet Ken in person, um, as always, I leave you with some um, reading. They are very short blogs, write-ups on um, some different security um, risks, uh, rogue certificates, um, time to disable TLS, and insight for microsegmentation. These are all Venify and Illumina, Illumio um, blogs, um, but because we partner with them, I thought it was really important to bring it to your attention. There's lots more out there to read. They're just the three I pulled up. And then the next upcoming session, in our um, mainframe tech talks is the leap to IM, I, IMS mode for basic encryption. Um, you can either, when you get the presentation, click on the link or right now um, scan with the barcode and it will take you right to that registration page. Now we're gonna go to some Q&A and we have a few questions that have come in. Um, the first is, our company uses Zeek Secure. How does BMC's Amy Security products compare to Zeek Secure? That's a good question. A lot of organizations have implemented Zeek Secure. Uh, one of the key differences between our technology and Zeek Secure is BMC's breach detection technology uh, comes with hundreds of areas that we're looking at out of the box. So we know where to look and we know what to look for. And as soon as our software is deployed, it's not uncom uncommon for us to see activity that nobody has seen before. People running with escalated privileges that nobody knew about. 
uh, FTPs that are being uh, done that are not secured FTPs. Uh, one of the reasons that's important is an unsecured FTP may very well have login information, user ID, password, in order to execute jobs on the mainframe. So you need those FTPs to be secured. Uh, another key area is, I'll just point out a couple of them here, is that we have a graphical interface uh, to disc define alerts, to send alerts over to the Security Operations Center. So ZSecure requires a programming language which requires extensive mainframe experience. Um, BMC's graphical interface makes it much easier for people who have limited mainframe expertise to actually configure alerts, send alerts, uh, and understand what's happening on the mainframe. And finally, integration to the Security Operations Center is very easy with our breach detection software. Whether you're using QRadar, Logarithm, Splunk, we integrate with virtually all of the market available Security Operations Center technologies. So it makes it easy to implement, deploy, and integrate. I loved when I heard to say out of the box because out of the box. Custom, yep, high, cust, high customization um, is then you have to perpetuate that. So I, I loved when I heard that. The next question I have is we use Venify, but only on our distributed system. How would I bring the mainframe into the Venify discussion? It's a really good question. It's, it's not uncommon for Venify to be deployed in a distributed systems environment, but they don't necessarily talk to the mainframe teams and the mainframe teams don't necessarily talk back. So um, we have a very tight partnership with Venify. So if you have Venify on your distributed systems environment, please contact me um, or Venify and we will help bridge the gap between your Venify implementation and the mainframe so that you can take the mainframe resources that are currently being used to implement certificates and probably use them for other higher value projects in your environment. Because when we automate, it means that it requires much less manual effort and you can take that mainframe talent and use it for other higher value projects. So we're happy to help bridge that gap and make that connection. And if you can't get a hold of Ken, uh, he's a busy, busy man. Um, you all received an invitation from somebody at BMC, either myself or others of my peer or sales reps. You can always reach out to one of us and we will we'll track Ken down for you. Um, the third question I have is, does BMC perform penetration tests or security assessments? and provide an independent review of um, my security, my mainframe security? It's a great question. It's probably the starting point for a lot of the mainframe security activity that we do. Um, it is not uncommon for us to find vulnerabilities that would allow a trained mainframe user to exploit in order to see data that they may maybe shouldn't be seeing, move data off of the mainframe that they shouldn't be uh, that they shouldn't be doing, or even bring the mainframe down or land ransomware. I'll give an example of something that we found recently. Um, there was an older RACF database that had read access on the mainframe. And there are programs available on the internet that will crack a RACF database. So when we pointed out as part of our assessment that this read-only access was available to a RACF database, the mainframe team was like, you know what, that's six months old. It's not really going to help anybody. Um, we require passwords to be reset every three months. So really not worried about that. So we did a little exercise for them. Moved the RACF database off, cracked it, looked at the usernames, looked at the passwords. And let's say this database was uh, a February database, 
right? It, it was eight months old or seven months old. We looked at the passwords and we saw like Ken Feb 01, Terry Feb 02. And it became pretty clear that with the username and the user is putting in the month for their password, it would be pretty easy for us to determine now that it was October, what that user's password was. And all of a sudden, the light went on to the mainframe team that because we're able to crack a RACF database and those programs are available on the internet, having a read-only version of an older RACF database could actually provide insight into how to penetrate a mainframe. One of many examples that we see, I can also say that I think the record that we set was eight minutes um, from the time we accessed the mainframe until the time we could bring the mainframe down was eight minutes. Um, so it's just not uncommon for us to find vulnerabilities that a trained mainframe professional could exploit uh, in order to do damage to the mainframe. So the answer is yes, we do, Terry. Well, I was one of those that was guilty of just incrementing my password by like a letter or a number. So I have learned my lesson. I do not do that anymore. Um, Ken, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure there's more questions. I actually have questions now that I've listened to your presentation again. Every time I listen to it, you know, something else triggers in my brain. I spent nearly 20 years um, on the other side of the table, um, so have experienced data breaches and whatnot. So um, it's always interesting to me. So thank you very much. If anybody would like additional information, please reach out to Ken. His email is in this presentation multiple times or reach out to me or any of your contacts at BMC. The, there's one lot more thing that I want to share, and that is um, what some of the education opportunities um, we, we offer here at BMC, and as you can see, there's a, a QR code for that also. Um, we all have some online uh, mainframe training. We have instructor-led training. Um, we have specific product training. And I think what's really important is this two-year program for newbies. I think we all know that um, we're getting up there in years, and we're bringing in newer and younger people. Um, and we can help you train them to um, support your system. And, and going back to what Ken said earlier, that's the whole beauty of having a GUI front end. It makes it much easier for those of um, us that don't like the green screen um, to quickly acclimate to the um, mainframe environment. With that, go one more slide, Ken, and then we are done. Um, I appreciate everybody's time and attention today. Um, and I look forward to talking to you again at my next mainframe tech session. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thanks, Tara.